Hey everybody, it's Nick here from Grayscale Gorilla Podcast. And in this episode, Chris and Chad and I, we all share some of our favorite tools and tips and movies and books from the last year uh, that really helped us you know, do better work and be better people, all that fun stuff. Uh, we go through uh, some of our favorite stuff from 2016 and share that with you guys. A um, couple other quick announcements before we get into today's episode. First is a shout out to Zachary Robinson from Layer Frame, who uh, graciously shepherded us and the website through a huge change in our... Um, iTunes and podcast platform. We actually re-hosted, or he actually re-hosted all of our old podcasts on a new platform, and that allows a couple fun things. It allows us to put out podcasts much easier, much quicker, and also, it now allows you to go back into Grayscale Gorilla podcast history and listen to episodes as early as 2011. And there's some good stuff back there. Uh, it, however you're listening to our podcast, if you go into the archive and start scrolling, you'll see interviews from people like G Monk back there, um, EJ, you know, uh, we got EJ from iDesign uh, as interviews, um, and even way back. I mean, you'll be surprised on uh, some of the special guests we had on the podcast and also some of my favorite podcasts that really weren't available as easily before. Uh, things like my Obsession podcast that I did a few years ago. You can actually just go back and listen to those as well. So um, thanks again to uh, to Layer Frame for helping us with that. That's a huge help. And uh, one other announcement, I just wanted to take a second and thank you guys for listening to this podcast. It's been a really fun experiment for us to do one of these a week. We hope it brings you value. We really appreciate all the um, reviews that we've been getting on iTunes. That helps us out a ton, gets the word out. And you know, if you have a friend uh, that you think they might like an, uh, one of these episodes, just share it with them directly. That'd be a big help to us and uh, and for them as well. If it brings you value, it might bring somebody else value as well. So uh, thanks again. I hope you guys have a wonderful New Year's. And uh, with that, let's head on into today's podcast right now. Hey guys, welcome. Happy Wednesday. How's everyone feeling today? Doing good, doing good. Doing feeling well. good. Happy holidays. We got Chad Ashley here, and we got Chris Schmidt looking good. Is that a is that a new sweater? Did you get something something for Christmas there, Chris? No, just my regular nice warm sweater. Oh, it looks cozy, man. Um, any any good gifts uh, this year? We're we're kind of in between Christmas and New Year's right now. Well, as we're recording this, kind of got that end of the end of the year feel. Um, how you guys how you guys feeling? Did you get anything fun for the for the holidays? Yeah, I mean, I got. A lot of cool stuff. I'm still a little bit f sad right now. I'm still dealing with the loss of Carrie Fisher. That's just kind of bumming me out still. But I'm gonna try my best to like put on my happy face. It's been a been a rough year, man. <laughs> I know. You know, not, not not to make it more of a bummer, but everybody's kind of freaking out about 2016. But isn't this the baby boomer generation of celebrities? There's just a lot of them. This isn't going to change in the future. This is the new normal. <laughs> So celebrities are going to drop like flies for the next 10 There's years. There's just that many celebrities. There there really is. And it's true because like I think you're right. I you you're absolutely right. People are hitting that age where they if they led an unhealthy life or maybe they didn't take care of themselves that they they're going to die and and we're starting to see that it's really sad because these are all people that uh our generation celebrity wise grew up with. So david bowie and 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 so on like these are like these are kind of our our heroes and our people that we look up to and it's kind of sad to see them go like this you yeah know? i think that's also contributing to kind of this higher number feeling where it's not only that we we know more people like that like we're getting older too so the people that we grew up with and that we watched in their movies are also getting older but there's also this idea that you know we we get to see so many more things like there's not three channels anymore you know there's so many more people and celebrities that you get to know around the world and 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 as they go it's uh the numbers just keep going up so it's um it's sad it's a it's big bowie prince that's all yeah. i needed that's all i needed to make a sad year for me i, I saw somebody it. put together like a kickstarter or a patreon or something to put a put a fund together to help betty white make it through the year <laughs> <laughs> just wrap her in, in like, bubbles. Like, no, no, like we have to stop 2016. <laughs> Put her in a cryogenic sleep. 
Yep. All right, four years left. We could do this. Let's go, Betty. Oh man. Well, what yeah. uh, what uh, what else? How you know? Actually, I had something um, kind of interesting happen over the holidays that was actually related to stuff that I should probably know more about, and I uh, wanted to share it with you guys. Um, my brother in law got one of those VR headsets that I always thought was kind of a gimmicky little toy thing. It's like fifty bucks. You put your phone in it. And I was like, what does that do exactly? You know, I never, I, I never tried it. I've, I've tried the bigger versions of um, VR. You know, I've tried the uh, Oculus and, Oculus like and the um, Vive or Vive or whatever that one is. Vive, yeah. I've tried, but, but these little plastic things were always like, all right, this is like the gimmick, right? This is, this is whatever. So my brother-in-law got one um, and I... Actually, both of my brothers, brothers-in-law got one from both sides of the family, and I actually learned that you could go onto YouTube and click any 360 video and turn that 360 video into um, like goggle mode. And I had mm-hmm, no clue. Cool. I had no clue this was a thing. So, and and th- and it doesn't have to be stereo. The the key, the reason I'm bringing this up is because there's so many videos out there that are shot just plain 360 that you could turn on goggle mode. And then put the goggles on, and as you turn your head around, actually be able to look around this video. So we got really excited. We rode roller coasters. We went skydiving. You know, we passed this little plastic thing around with a phone in front of it and watched like half a dozen things. There's a Star Wars short film that they made. Um, a lot of this is probably for those of you who follow VR uh, a little. Uh, I'm showing uh, how behind is this, I am. Is this things. a podcast from 2014 that, that just like got was in a time capsule? Well, I'm here's kidding. here's why I brought it up and why I got excited was I realized I shot and published on on uh, YouTube about five different 360 videos over the last year. Um, a couple of them were of me skiing, so I put it I put the 360 uh, camera on my ski pole and took like a 10 minute ski run. And uh, I found that video and put it in the goggles and was able to literally stand in my parents' kitchen and turn my head around and see me and see the mountains and see where I was going. And it was all, it was seamless. It just, it just worked. And I had no clue how easy it is to go from front to back on, on this VR process to, to buy a $300, 360 camera to, to take it anywhere, record it, put it on YouTube, and then YouTube and these headsets do all the hard work, which is split it up into stereo. Now, I understand it's not stereo. It's still a flat image, but it's still putting yeah, it, it on. Yeah, splits the two different eyes. Together. Right. And then, of course, all the gyro stuff in the in the phone takes care of all the looking around. But Was I, this the Samsung uh, gear? Is no, this is the called? Theta... Uh, Rico Theta No, no, the, the goggles that they had. He had the Zeiss brand. Um, Zeiss brand? Yeah, Zeiss, like the lens brand. I'll find out what that one's called. It's called like VR gear or something. But it was really, it was like white and black plastic. It looked really nice. Uh, and the the coverage of the of the eyes and everything was really good. It was, for for, for however much it was, you know, I'm, I'm, a lot of those I just assume are, are around like the $50 range. Um, understanding that you put a, you know, a $600 piece of, uh, technology in front of that piece of plastic, but still like if you already have it in your pocket for 60 more bucks, you could actually go watch any 360 video and understand what this is. So this actually got me interested in things that we could pull off with, um, cinema even without even having to, to, to worry about stereo. I was, I, I guess to me, I was amazed on how good it was without needing the stereo part of it and how immersive it was just as like looking around a 360 video. So I wanted to, I wanted to say that for anybody out there that's, that's looking at these plastic things on the shelf and thinking that it's more of a gimmick, it was really immersive for, you know, for 50 bucks. Yeah. They've gotten pretty cheap too. I mean, you've got the the Samsung gear, which is I think kind of the one that you see on TV the most, which kind of works with the Samsung galaxy, uh, line of phones. Is that what he had? Did he have a, a Samsung Galaxy phone or what kind this of This one worked have? with my iPhone and it worked with his um Samsung. It worked so with it's both. Kinda, yeah. So once you once it's in do you have to get an app for the that pair of goggles at all? No. It's nope. kind of new. You go to you go to YouTube and even YouTube <clears throat> has a part of it that will ask you to take a photo 
of what brand it is. Yeah, like the, the little code. Yeah, it makes you take a. It doesn't force it, but I think what it does is it recenters like where the center of the video is based on mm-hmm. what goggles you're using. So I was just amazed, like how closely linked all that was. So thank you, YouTube, Google added again this year, surprising me at every turn. Thank you. Um, but really, really cool. And and the fact that you can hand it to like my grandma who was like looking around, you know, and and amazed. <laughs> Um, to my uh, my wife, who was like terrified of heights, who was like on a tightrope and like grabbing on the furniture so she didn't fall while she was like walking across the <laughs> tight. It was just it worked really well for for what it was, and it it got me thinking where maybe a little bit further with this VR stuff than I previously thought. Yeah, that's I almost I came really close to buying the um, <clears throat> the Google. Uh, daydream view which is kind of their goggles but they're they decided like all right we're not going to do like space age plastic goggles we're going to do goggles that are comfortable that are made of cloth and don't hurt your head and and they're cheap i think it's like i want to say they're like 60 bucks for a pair of these goggles now that comes with like a little handset too right yeah and it comes with a clicker which is kind of interesting because then you can play games with it and like point at stuff and and i thought about like I thought about getting um, that, but then I've, I played with, um, we had a bunch of these VR headsets uh, went back when I worked at DK and every time I'd put them on, I'd, I'm like really into it. But then I'd realized that there's so little content like from a gaming perspective out there for these yet still. Um, I mean, there's plenty of options if you're doing a Vive or like a really like a dedicated headset Oculus type thing. But the more um, the the gear and uh, even the the daydream, there's just not a ton of games out there yet, and and also too the phones I think need to get a little bit better uh, resolution and a little bit you know be able to process these images faster and easier because when I played with them the phone would always get so hot like it <laughs> would like it it would your almost eyeballs. like yeah like burn out your phone I was afraid of but yeah it's, it has come a long way though man and like I think. YouTube has done a great job in uh, embracing 360 video just all together because, you know, you can you can actually you don't even need the goggles. You can watch a 360 video and like look around. And if it's on your phone, you can just like move your phone around. So, yeah, that's really cool. I'm really um, we I, I have the same camera as you do, Nick, and I feel like I don't do enough with it. You know, like it's it's usually just sitting on my shelf over there and. Honestly, for the last few months, uh, I've done the same thing, and it makes me want to experiment a little bit more. Um, I'll actually link up that 360 ski video. If if anybody out there has one of the headsets, you can watch me go ski out in Salt Lake City uh, in 360. I'm sure sure it's the first thing on your list as soon as you stop listening to this podcast, but it is... Uh, I want I want everybody to check it out because it's such a low cost of entry to go from making your own. I always like it when regular people could just go make it right. There's always that's kind of how I viewed VR in the past was like you needed all the gear and you needed new editing tools and you needed all this new stuff to learn. And it we were, we just weren't there yet. And by watching myself ski, what I realized was a three hundred dollar camera plus a fifty dollar piece of plastic. Um, got you from start to finish on a VR where you could record what you want and then put yourself back there again. And that got me thinking about it in a, a different way. It was pretty, pretty fun. Well, um, I know it'll be a little bit of a shorter one today. Chris had a good idea. It's, it's getting toward the end of the year and maybe we could share some of the, um, I don't know, uh, toys, tools, books, movies, some of the, our favorite things from the last year, from 2016, before we before we start a new one, and um, if you guys are are ready, I think we can get started. Chris, you, you, it's your idea. You probably have more of more than any of us. Um, you, what's what's one of your things this year that really uh, that that you've been digging? Right. Uh, yeah. So I got a little list here. I'm going to throw out these two quick ones as honorable mentions that I'm not going to go into because I've talked about them in past podcasts. But I've got my awesome new PC laptop which is from uh, razorzone.com. And I think I just got the Razer Blade, but there's also an even more powerful one, the, the, Razer, Bra- the Razer Blade Pro. And then the other thing I, I've shot, given a shout out a couple times was Microsoft's OneNote 
just for like note taking. And I thoroughly enjoy that. So those are some honorable mentions. Um, but uh, the first thing I'm going to start out with is going to be my Mr. Coffee two in one iced tea brewing system. It's just an iced tea maker. But I, for, for years, I've wanted like a really good iced tea maker. And like it, and I want, I didn't want it to look dumb and it, it, it's nice and black and sleek and, and I can fill the jar up a couple times and I just put it in the fridge instead of like immediately making iced tea. So I make super concentrated tea and then I can just like mix it with water and ice and have it last for a week. Hmm. Um, and it's, it's, it's great. Cause I, it's kind of my only source of caffeine, caffeine. I don't can drink coffee. Loose, I don't drink soda. Is, can you so, use loose tea on it or is it a pod system or what? Tea, it's just bags. You just put or, and I, tea bags. I think I think you can even use loose tea. I just don't own any loose tea. So hmm. it's got like, a, it's just 2017 the year of loose tea for, for Chris, I think. <laughs> oh yeah. Start experimenting. Well, it's the kind of thing I, for years I've been just buying tea bags of various kinds. So I've been just working my way through my collection. Just experimenting. What, uh, what kind have you found works, works well with this well, system so far? Well, every, every tea bag is working great. I mean, I, I just go for your generic Lipton tea, you know, where it's, I don't, I don't sweeten it or anything. Sometimes I throw in a splash of cranberry juice Ooh. and then, uh, you know, lemonade. Uh, I, I do that. That's like my go-to drink when I'm out. I just don't keep lemonade in the house. Mm. All right. But, this yeah, is, that, that's my number one. Ice tea right. maker. This is good. That, that's, All right. What else you got? No, we oh, got to go, go down. Are gotta, we doing rounds? Oh, round yeah. Robin, man. Okay. I'm sorry. I didn't know the format. Nobody, we didn't talk about the format. <laughs> <clears throat> I'm I'm flustered. You want me to go, so, Chad? And, do well, I don't know. know. Like, because to me, on my screen, I've got Chris, and then you, Nick, and then I'm last. But on your <laughs> screen, I might be second. So, do you want me to go? Uh, I could go. I'm okay with that. All right, you go. I'll start with um with a website. Uh, it is called the Wire Cutter, and um that this site's been saving me a lot of. Um, mental thought time over the last year for sure. And what it is, is it's a review site um, and they basically go super review uh, popular things like TVs, headphones, Bluetooth headphones, um, computers, laptops, outdoor cameras, all this stuff like technology for your house, technology for your office. And what they do is they put together a list of here's our recommendation. And what they what they don't do is say, hey, here's the top ten best. It's literally a place where you go and they say, hey, if you if you just want a, a good one that you know works and will do the job, just buy this one. And I've always wanted a site like that. I, I've always loved that site, and I've been using Wirecutter for a few years. But this is one of the years where I I actually have gone to it and have just blindly trusted it. Whereas I rarely even read their reviews anymore. I just know that over the years I've I've kind of bought what they've recommended and it's always been a good pick. So when it comes to something that you're not a super geek about, but you need. So for me, I have a standing desk I bought this year and I typed in good standing desks and Wirecutter did a huge breakdown of like, you could, you could scroll for hours on on Wirecutter. They get into so much detail. They buy them all. They set them all up. They talk about ease of use. They talk about warranties. They talk about all this stuff. But what I've done this year, which is different, is just literally go to their site, buy what they recommend, and not have that entire day of research where I get lost in the details. And I just have that type of personality where I get lost in the details so easily. Like, let's go... Let's go watch every YouTube review on this one set of headphones. And I love that stuff, but it's such a waste of time sometimes. So anyway, I trust Wirecutter at this point. This desk has been awesome. Um, I bought some headphones of theirs. I also bought even stuff like coffee makers, things like that, where you just want a good one and you don't want a lemon. Just go check out Wirecutter and give it a shot. Battery packs. Um Anyway, go go check it out if you haven't seen it. I just I love I love that site. They've saved me so much time. That's awesome, man. Yeah, I'll have to check that. I'm out. definitely gonna. I just added that to my bookmark list. Very cool. Very All right, cool. you're up, buddy. All right, um, I'll I'll stay. <clears throat> well, I don't know where to begin. Really, I've had I've so many things that I've picked up and and kind of adopted in 2016 that I really like. Um, but I think the one that's probably had the biggest impact 
Uh, I'll start with that one, which is uh, switching. And you've heard me talk about it multiple times, but switching, getting rid of AT&T altogether and switching to Project Fi by Google uh, has saved me a, a lot of money. And I really think that it's it's a, a phone service for the future, meaning that it's really simple to use. There's no hidden fees. There's no contracts. There's no paying off your phone for num numerous years. I think they just have a really great idea of how paying for your cell phone should be. And I, I a lot of people hit me in the comments before about, oh, you know, you, it's America. They're, the carriers there suck. And in Europe, they're much easier to deal with. Well, that's great, but we live in America and they suck really bad and they gouge you at every turn and they're constantly redoing their deals to figure out new ways of, of keeping your money and keeping your business. So Project Fi by Google, highly recommend it. Plus is, is that it's probably going to save you maybe 50% or more on your phone bill. Uh, minus is you're not going to be able to use an iPhone. You're going to have to jump into their ecosystem of phones, which I gladly did, which is my second favorite thing, my new Google Pixel phone. Um, and if you're willing to do that, <clears throat> you're going to have yourself uh, a much cheaper phone experience because it, it uses the Wi-Fi wherever you are to um, whenever you're near an open Wi-Fi, it encrypts your phone and uses that open Wi-Fi. It also uses three different um, cell carriers. So when you, they don't have Google Towers everywhere. They have, they're using Sprint, uh, US Cellular, and I think T-Mobile are the three carriers that they piggyback from. And what's unique about the Fi system is that it'll pick the best one of the, those three, no matter where you are. So if you're out, you know, if you're in the city and T-Mobile happens to have the best signal, it'll just use the T-Mobile and then so on and so forth. If you're in a different part of the country where your cellular is stronger, highly recommend it. Great customer service. You can actually chat with customer service right from the phone, which is really great. Um, and you know, being, if you're, if you're, if you work at home or if you're in an office all day with Wi-Fi and your phone is connected to Wi-Fi all day, why can't you use that for calls, for texts, for all this stuff? There's no reason to use your cell data for stuff like that if you're on Wi-Fi. So to me, this is my number one. Project Fi with the Pixel phone is my number one thing that I absolutely loved from uh, 2016 from my favorite things. Dig it. Sweet. And uh, this is a good time to mention, I'm actually, uh, as everyone's writing these or mentioning these, putting these in the show notes, Oh, and I see uh, we got some links as well. Thank you, Chris, linking it up. So uh, if you want to see the show notes, we actually put these up on YouTube and at um, our website at uh, Grayscale Gorilla. If you search for the most recent podcast, you can find it there. And then that way you can just link out and click to, to go check out all these things. So, uh, all right, Chris, you're up, man. All right. I want to do a movie recommendation. Now, there's a, there's a bunch of pretty good movies this year uh, and... You know, there, there's other ones I might recommend, but I thought we'd go with something a little weirder, um, something that you might not have watched. Uh, I want to recommend The Witch, which I think came out pretty early in the year, but I only watched it in the last couple of weeks. And it is a horror movie, and it pretty thoroughly creeped me out. And horror movies don't really creep me out. Um, like, I, I don't want to get too much into details, but it like takes place back in like like old timey New England, and uh like they speak in period kind of talk and they and and the dialogue is lifted like a lot of dialogue is lifted from like journals and writings and letters of the day uh and it's pretty spooky it's not it's actually not rated that highly but if you like horror movies this is that's a pretty 91 percent on rotten tomatoes oh that's nice that's pretty good that's pretty uh, rare so yeah i'm gonna throw that as a uh, movie right and i'm not gonna say anything else you, if you like horror movies at all check out the witch even though it's spelled with like the two V's, because that's the way I think it used to be written back in the day. So hmm. two V's instead of a W. But yeah, there's just the witch. So they decided to take two V's. And then when they decided to come up with the letter that, that made the two V's, they called it a double U. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and the podcast comes to a screeching halt I, on that one. I got to go. You just, you just blew my mind. I just got to go find what, how the, how two V's turn into a W. I need, I need a... You know, I need a, a history lesson in the in oh, the, our language thanks. here. Thanks, Chris. I'm going to check this out. Is it available to rent? Do we know? I, I think if you have Amazon Prime, they have it for free on Prime right now. Ooh, really? 
Well, I do have that, yeah. and I will be watching this movie. I will check. Also, that out. I recommend Amazon Prime. Is it rated R? <laughs> What's it rated? Yeah, Amazon oh, I don't Prime. Know. Holy but it's moon. pretty. Uh, it's pretty freaky. Okay, so no kids. Uh, I'd say no. All right, cool, man. That's awesome. Yeah. Cool. So, um, I guess I'm up. Uh, I'll go with a. Uh, I'll go with a book. Got two books to recommend during this. Um. I'll get the one I got earlier first. Uh, it's by, uh, it's from the Draplin Design Company. Um, Aaron Draplin is one of my favorite style of designers. He's got this, if you're looking at it on YouTube, I'm showing the cover. It's that cover makes me want to have it. Yeah. So he's got this really um, in a vintage style. He loves, you know, old style, flat logo, not really gradient based stuff. It's really flat illustrator style logos. And he just, He's got a style. Um, well, here's here's probably what he's best known for is field notes. So he designed field notes, and uh, he collected old field notes, what they used to be called, like that farmers had. Well, Chad's got some uh, some new field notes on his desk, um, and he made these books and started sending them out to friends. And um, you know, uh, I mean, I don't need to tell the whole field note story, but Jim Kudal got one of those books and said, Hey, we should make these <laughs> and sell them to everybody. And, uh, and that's the short version of how field notes got started, but he actually made that. Like he started, um, you know, that if you, if you know the design of field notes, you, you understand what his style is. So what I've se- what I've really liked about not only this book is understanding that a designer can kind of have their style and, that that's I guess that's always been the case, but but for him it's such this unique, vintage, classic, you know, Futura style that I've been really trying to dig further into. Like who now I, I kind of do this with music. Whenever there's a band I really like, I want to figure out who that band's favorite bands are. You know, where did they get all of their sound, and where where did they get all of what they love from? And what it seems like. Aaron does by doing a lot of research and kind of watching all of his videos um, is that he, he literally collects as he walks around. Like he, he collects in junk stores, like old logos. Uh, There's a great video of him where he's, he's uh, walking around a junk store and he's looking for all these logos and in, in like on the undersides of all this stuff. And what he eventually does is he takes this big box full of junk and he just dumps the junk out on the floor and he looks at the bottom of the box and the bottom of the box has like a like this way up logo that is like so old and he's like this is the stuff i'm looking for like it's just an arrow <laughs> with like some text under it uh anyway he is uh quite a character as well he's a great speaker and um just been really digging this book and and th- this style as well i'm kind of he's pushing me into experimenting with a much more simple um design style which I've always felt like I've had a simple design style, but he's making me, he's kind of making me feel better about it. <laughs> you know what I mean? He's kind of making me go, <laughs> I could actually just be very good at a, a, a simple s- style. Like here's, oh, sorry if you're listening to this, but these kind of like pages oh, yeah. of just beautiful, he, he, simple oh, wow. typography. <clears throat> so he, um, I love him too. Like he, he's a fantastic designer and, and I watch a lot of his stuff and I'm a huge fan of his work. And I noticed one thing that that he did that I did this last year too is like he'll go to used bookstores and just look for, uh, you know, any sort of like branding or logo design from the '70s and '80s because that's really where his um, style comes from. It's like uh, corporate design from the '80s, uh, that type of real bold um, Saul Bass kind of looking stuff. And I've I'll show you a book that I found that that I bought it because of Aaron Aaron Draplin or Draplin. I can't remember how to pronounce his name, but let me grab it real quick. You got it. Oh, and, and Chad's up next too. We got a little, we need um like standby music, like when the, the video goes bad. So you got, you got, one of you two has to make a, a, a theme song for. So I found, <laughs> oh, that's this, great. Podcast. I found this book in a used bookstore yeah, and it's called Corporate Design International. Just the cover looks awesome. I know. And it's it was from, I believe, 1984. And I bookmarked. I always like to like throw little post-its on things that I find interesting. 
And so like you'll find stuff like this that is right out of his mm. his style, you know. And he pulls a lot of that kind of a lot of this kind of thing, uh, maybe not so much that one, but like this sort of thing. Oh yeah. Just like single line single thickness line uh it logos like that i just i love that style so this is kind of where he get he'll he'll comb the uh bookstores and look for this type and he just soaks in all that stuff and comes up with his own twist on it it's just really amazing i didn't mean to hijack hijack your thing i just wanted to share that with you no he's uh he's a great guy interesting character and oh, oh, another thing i really love about aaron before we move on is he is a good designer that doesn't act like a designer. He's not, he's, he doesn't like wear um, the fedora and, and like <laughs> act like designers. Um, yeah. He's I posted just, a video that people should watch of him. Yeah. I, I, I've always liked that kind of um, uh, personality of like, he just has this like, Hey, I don't know. I like making this stuff. This is fun. Personality. He's the every man designer, the working man's designer. He, really, he is definitely the working man. He is. Totally. Yeah. So check him out. Um, uh, I guess that's my pick. Uh, who is next? It's Chad. Chad should be it's me. I, I, I kind of took some of yours, but I'll keep it quick. Um, <clears throat> so I have been a big fan of this site called everydaycarry.com, which is kind of like your site. Um, kind of like the wire cutter site, but a little bit more about things that you have with you all the time. And their whole mantra is does, you know, they do those pocket dump photos where you just like dump out your bag and take these great photos. And anyway, this whole everyday carry movement kind of started, I started getting into it in 2016 and started using it to find um, my last blank, which is kind of this mentality of like, I want to buy the last wallet I'll ever need to buy. I want to buy the last flashlight I'll ever need to buy. And that's what they're kind of about. And they have all these people that submit ideas and submit their pocket dumps and their everyday carries and you get all these ideas and then they link out different things in, you know, if you say, Oh, that's a really cool knife. You can, it actually links out to where you can buy it. So you can actually purchase it. So I've purchased, quite a few things from there like for instance if you're on youtube you'll see this i purchased this really nice uh kershaw knife which i'm a huge fan of kershaw i also purchased a really nice flashlight this is a phoenix um mini flashlight very small waterproof takes one triple a battery in the whole body and it's got three brightness Ooh. settings so it can do some it's super nice in the summertime when we're out camping or playing around with the kids outside at night um, and then the last thing that I just got, which is the Gerber dime, which you, got, you can also find it's a multi-tool. Uh, it's got a knife, it's got tweezers, it's got all the fun stuff that the, every boy scout wants and it fits into a really small little package. And that was all kind of inspired from everyday carry. Oh, and this also to the, um, I don't know if you guys have, let me actually, let me see you guys take out your wallets really quick. Let me see what your wallets look like. Oh, uh, mine's downstairs. Oh, done. All right. Let me see the size of this wallet. Unless you have the same wallet I do, which is very possible. If you have a Costanza wallet, I don't. Okay, so that's a pretty that's a pretty small wallet. Usually, if you're like me, up until last year, I had a Costanza wallet. I had like a wallet <laughs> that would like that Trifold. would like dent your ass cheek. You know, if you sit <laughs> on it more than an hour. And so um, my friend Jeremy turned me on to uh, Tight T H or T G T. Um, which is essentially a um, an elastic band. If you're on YouTube, you can see this pretty well on one side. And then on the other side, it's a nice uh, leather, um, two-tone leather with a pocket that you can put your you know receipts into. And it fits all of your credit cards really simply and easily right here. I don't want to try that. My, my credit card number. But um, it has like, it is, it's, look how thin that is. I mean, that's crazy thin. It's like takes up no space. And you'd think like, okay, well, it's so small. I'm going to, you know, it's going to fly out of my pocket. But the surfaces are actually pretty rough. And um, this leather is like super soft. How many super... cards are in your, in your uh, system? So right now I've got um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, mm -hmm. eight cards in there. Okay. Right now. I may have to try that because I think between the clip... Oh. I got a metal clip plus the leather. I think I think I could shrink it quite a lot. 
You could. Yeah, I'm sure you could, but it's it's T G H T. It's it's tight, really. I think. Is yeah, what I think I might get it. one of those, man. It's really nice, and you know they have a bunch of different colors, and you could do this cool stripe thing like I did, just because I'm I don't know liked it for some reason. I'm just gonna get whatever wow. Chad has because he's so cool. <laughs> yeah, no, that's pretty good. <laughs> I, don't know I always I, I have a regular old style wallet, but every time I take a trip, I purge the wallet of every. I take everything out and only put back in what I need, so I tend to keep it fairly pretty thin. thin. Yeah, yeah. I I I was one of those guys that didn't do that, and so I would like never purge it, and my wallet just grew to a size that. <laughs> yeah. was, you know, getting me scoliosis, like, like keychains. People who get end up with like fifty keys on a keychain. It's like I have two keys on my keychain. <laughs> That's oh, all I need. If you if you're looking for a keychain, I got I got what you need right here, man. This is a, uh, a an S beaner. It's a carabiner clip, but it's an S shape, so you can actually clip it in two different places, which is really nice. And it's really thin and really light, and you can buy them in packs of like I don't know ten or something like that. And if you have one of these, you can connect anything to it. I use it to connect my flashlight, but you could just as easily use it to connect your little multi-tool if you wanted to keep that on your backpack or like something like that. You could easily just clip it right on there and you got both things ready to go. Ooh, we just need a GSG camping trip now. We'd be all set. I know. I'm set, dude. I'm ready to go. <laughs> yeah. At any given point, Chad has at least five knives on him. <laughs> <laughs> at least that's good uh, when the bear comes we'll just push chad out front yeah uh i don't know how much damage i'll be able to do with my <laughs> three inch blade just annoy the bear mm, that's right you don't uh you don't need to run out the uh outrun the bear you know <laughs> yeah. stab it in the right place you just you just push chad out front <laughs> and go um here you go yeah he's got cover you don't have to feel guilty he's got knives yep all right, we are, uh, let's see, back to Chris. Back to me. Uh, I thought I'd do something a little different. Um, I was going to talk about one of my my favorite new subreddits. So if you guys aren't already on Reddit, Reddit, of course, is amazing. It's a way of kind of curating the internet to your favorite things, and then you get a constant feed of it. If, you, if you're not already on Reddit, I'm just like assuming everybody is, but if you're not already on Reddit, you should totally check it out. And if you go to the front page and you don't like something you're seeing, then unsubscribe from that thing and subscribe to something you like. So uh, the subreading I do is not maybe my, I want to go for something a little broader. So it's not necessarily one of my super duper favorites, but I think it can be loved by everybody. And it is our catastrophic failure. <laughs> and it's mostly videos of like giant equipment failures of just like cranes falling over and bridges collapsing and dams oh, bursting. Man. That sounds addictive. Um, and and the reason I'm recommending it is there's there's a lot of subreddits where it's very repetitive, and this one actually does a pretty good job of it's it's a constant trickle of good new content of like like circuitry breaking and just bulldozers crashing and just <laughs> like a failing to dem you know have a building demolition. It's just a fun good subreddit of seeing things explode. So. You can't you can't go wrong with that kind of thing. We, so I'll we, put a link of that within notes. Yeah, we may have to have a, a subreddit um, podcast a subreddit here soon. Podcast, yeah. That's a that's a whole list of fun stuff. Um, yeah, there we go. Kept mine short. I got one more though. I've been uh, I've been digging Reddit uh, for sure recently. I still haven't subscribed and like curated anything yet. I'm still just a, a homepage dummy, but um, I think I'm about ready to to start jumping in and subscribing and doing all those fun things. Um, all right, I'll uh, let's see what do I got in here. I had two more, but I'll make it quick. The the one is if you guys are doing any video, these ring lights that I've been using. If you've been enjoying my lovely um, side light during this episode, um, Chad might have the same one. Oh, uh, yep. I think we all do. I think I, we. I, uh, I'm gonna just flip this back. I enjoyed it so much that I had the the whole team buy these things, and uh, yep. the prices move around quite a lot. Um, on on Amazon, but they're anywhere between sixty and ninety bucks, depending on when you buy it. And it's uh, it's not LED, so it's not super uh low heat, uh, but it's way less heat than a regular uh you know studio light. Uh, there it's a halogen lamp, and or I'm sorry, it's a fluorescent lamp, and it does a good job. It's a ring light, so you get you know you get those nice eye things if you put it around your camera. The real idea is to put your camera in the middle of it and then get these really nice eye highlights. It's a little tough if you have glasses 
Um, you get a lot of reflections, so I actually put mine off to the side a little bit. But for the cost, they're really good daylight balanced lights. I have two of them actually um, in the studio here. I'll light my face with one and do kind of a hair ring light, rim light kind of style deal. Um, and they've just been really versatile, really low heat for what I use them for. And for all the uh, YouTube stuff I've been doing, it's just nice to have these sitting around. Um, so that's one. And I'll, I'll just quickly say the other one is uh, a newer book I just got. This is Tim Ferriss's new book. It's called Tools of Titans. If you um, are, you know, if you're a fan of Tim Ferriss or not, I would have you go check this book out no matter what, because what this is, is it's not necessarily written by Tim. It is uh, a list of tools and quotes and conversations that he's had over the last few years on his podcast. And what he does is kind of like boil down each podcast into two or three pages of actionable uh, kind of things that that person said. So if it's a, a, a morning routine, he puts that in there. If it's a type of food, I mean, this book goes through, uh, there's three different chapters. There's healthy, wealthy, and wise. So you can literally go through a third of this book. I mean, it's a big book, if you could see on the podcast Whoa. here. Um, wow. Wow. That's and a thick one. So hundreds, and what's nice is it's kind of choose your own adventure. You don't need to go read this giant book. Um, and I usually, frankly, usually just read books with audio books. But for this, it's just not really practical to do so. So what I've been doing is just kind of flipping open to random pages and uh, just seeing how other people live. I always love the idea of looking at other successful people and seeing what worked for them. And then kind of trying to find that Venn diagram on what worked for them and then also what I think might work for me and then trying that out. That's been how I've done so many things in my life by looking at other people that are doing or are doing something similar to what I'd like to do, seeing how they got there and then kind of merging that with things that I'm interested in and then just literally going and trying it. So a book like this is really fun for me to open it up and literally see how like Ed Catmull's in here, like uh, quotes that he has and uh, how to become a better artist. He's discovered, looks like meditation's big, been a big part of his life. So, um, you know, a really interesting book. The The foreword is by um, Arnold Schwarzenegger, actually. And uh, he's he's got this great, uh, you know, two-page foreword about how he is not a self-made man. He's learned by other people that taught him. He is he is the culmination of his coaches and his parents and his people that he's learned from. And I've always loved that concept of kind of uh, human development and looking at how others have done it. Um, it's the best. It's the best thing we have as humans is stories of how other people have done it. So um, really interesting book. It's been really fun. I've probably only read a tenth of it so far, but been really nice. Um, that's my pick. It's a good end of the year book too. It's a good like, you know, reading. I can't remember. Did you say that it's available on audio or not? It is not available on audio. I don't know if he'll do a version on audio. Um, another book of his called Four Hour Chef, I want to say it was, um, was never, I want to say it was like never officially on audio or maybe it was Four Hour Body, but it, I think a Four Hour Body was similar where it was more choose your own adventure. It's not a book you read through. It's not a story. It's literally mm -hmm. two or three pages of everyone from like hip hop artists to business people to like yogis are in here, chess masters. Um, and then it's just been really good. So if you've, hmm. if you, Check it out. yeah, if you're into, you know, kind of self development or just interested in seeing how other people think of the world, which is kind of partly when, why I like it. Sometimes somebody is so backwards from how I think, but I, I really enjoy reading that stuff too, because it just reminds me that, there's so many different ways to live. And um, those kind of things get me thinking in different ways. Even if I don't, you know, even if I don't use exactly what they do, it gets me thinking like, I can do this my way too. So I don't know if that's helpful. I'll put that in the links. And uh, does that mean Chad? Does that mean you're the last one? I guess I'm the last one. Um, oh, I've got one more though. Ooh, oh, you do have Chris. one more? Okay. Yes. Yes. I think my one favorite in. one for last. All right, we'll, we'll have Chris finish this out then i'll do mine and then chris will finish this out so i gotta to do my last one i have to go shut my shades i'll be right back Ooh, whoa there's a demo i gotta get the music out again for you get that music going 
The best way. Okay, we're back. My my latest obsession is uh, Hue lights, and they're made by Philips. And I'm sure you've seen the commercials, and you've seen them at the store. And you're like, what are these stupid colored lights all about? And I was one of those people um, until I started playing around with them. And in a studio situation where you have a backdrop, maybe you're shooting for a video. A uh, podcast, a vlog, or something like that. Having um, just regular incandescent bulbs on your backdrop can get really boring. So I started investing in hue bulbs, and I got a few of them, and then I got a few more. And I really, really like them because you can operate them all with your phone, or you can use a. Um, I have a wall switch too that I put in, um, so when you come into the room, they'll turn on. Um, but they have a neat little hub that connects to the internet, connects to your phone. And I can just simply go to this Hue app and just start to change the look of my lighting in my room. Like right now, you're just seeing two of my uh, backlights. And I'll turn off, well, I'll just change those. So I can I actually have a different routine uh, based on what I'm doing for the day. So I have like all these different settings that I can click on. So if I click on, let's say, Ar Arctic Aurora, uh, it turned that one over there blue and then I can change the intensity here and maybe bring it up to 100% although with the blue light it doesn't really make a huge difference so now all of the colors of my lights I don't know if you can see that very well are are in this arctic kind of blue um, I can also come into the different scenes and just turn them all onto incandescent regular bright white so that's just like a regular room light temperature right there um, let's see what else my favorite one is probably this one, which is what I had on when we started. Um, and it just allows you to change the color of each light. Uh, you can do, in fact, I, we can pick one light. Let's pick the one that's a little bit more visible, probably the one in that, in that back corner over there. And I can start to um, change the color. Ooh, if you're I on like YouTube, red. if you're in YouTube, um, you're seeing this. All the people just listening are just going to have to imagine this light changing colors because it's pretty cool. It's pretty and, thorough. Yeah, it's. I mean, it's it's like a whole rainbow. It's not really exposing for this app very well, but uh, here, let me bring the brightness down on my phone. Maybe that'll help. Let's see if this helps. So you have this rainbow that you can like swap around. And so I really, yeah, the red is kind of nice. I might actually do that. It looks pretty cool. Yeah, you look you look um, tough, man. Uh, so the uh, the the other great thing about this, oops, I should have saved that setting. Uh, is you can play a really funny practical joke on somebody if they don't know what a hue light system is. And they come into your office and they're like, oh, these are cool. And I'm like, oh, yeah, these are these talking lights. You just tell it what color you want it to be and it'll change it'll change the color. And you just have the app open in your hand over here. And they say, oh, really? And you're like, yeah, just tell, you know, tell it, give it a color. And they'll be like red. And then you just with your thumb move it over <laughs> to the red. <laughs> and they're like, oh, my God. And then they'll be like, I swear to God, I, when I had my family over here, I had everybody screaming colors at this light, and I was trying, I was sitting here like changing it with my thumb as fast as I could. So somebody said, I think they said uh, some color that I didn't even like. I couldn't like think of it, like how to, you know. I think it might have been like um, chartreuse or something like that, and I like completely didn't know, and I got it wrong, and they're like, "Hey, wait, it didn't know that one," and I'm like, "Well, you know, they're still working out the kinks." <laughs> It's more like a eight pack of Crayola color, you know, voice system. Exactly. So yeah, it was. So if you have a Hue light system, they look great on video, and uh, you can mess with your family. So that's it. Awesome. Very fun. All right, my last one is probably one of my favorite things of the entire year, and that is the TV show One Punch Man. Now, if you are at all, if you have even a passing like interest or if you've seen just a couple like animes in your past let's say you've watched maybe uh, like akira and maybe a ninja scroll maybe a vampire hunter d you know just kind of like the main ones that most people seem to know one punch man is a parody cartoon that takes every anime trope and cranks it up to like 15 it is like i watching through it like I, I I think it's a, the TV show I've enjoyed the most ever where it's just like, it's clever. Uh, it's, and, and even though they're making fun of anime tropes, they also engage on them in a way where you're engaged as well. 
and it's so over the top. It's so amazing. Like I, I, when I wasn't actively laughing, I had like a giant silly grin on my face, just thoroughly enjoying every moment of of One Punch Man. It started out as a web comic, and then it got animated in this uh, season one. I think they're supposed to make a season two. I almost don't even want them to because they did everything that I need them to do in season one. Um, and yeah, I just I cannot recommend One Punch Man enough. And it's got the most amazing theme song too. So that that, awesome. that's that's my favorite thing of the year. Better than Cowboy Bebop's theme song? Uh, I'd say so. Wow! All right, <laughs> <clears throat> I'm listening. I'm going. I'm I, I'm I'm starting with the theme song, and then uh, maybe I'll stick around. Uh, this this sounds my this daughter sounds fun. is so into anime that oh my like. God. I think show, show but she's she's not quite to that level where she had to think she would like be able to handle a parody because a, she would just be, parody like, and yeah. satire. So maybe in a few years I'll show it to her. But it, it also works really well as just a straight through anime. So but yeah. It's it would be great for everybody. And I, I also recommend watching it with Japanese English subtitles, which is my preferred way of watching any anime. Hmm. It's as it was intended. <laughs> <laughs> purist well we have all these uh links here uh at, at the show notes on youtube and we'll put them up on the website um and uh you know i'm gonna put the put another shout out at the beginning but i um uh let's see here i wanted to make sure i got this got this right you know what we'll do it at the beginning so uh anybody that's interested in in the shout out uh, that missed the beginning should go back and listen to it. That's how I'm going to do that. <laughs> it's called uh, nice. it's a reverse teaser. <laughs> Very nice. <laughs> um, anything else for uh, the end of the year? You know, we got. Uh, the, I've always thought this this time between Christmas and New Year's for me is a mentally interesting place. It's kind of a quiet time for me to kind of um, you know, there's not a lot of action going on online. There's not a lot of all the family stuff kind of gets a little quiet. Everyone's traveling. And, and for me, this time has always been a big brainstorm and, and plan time. I know it is for a lot of people at the end of the year. Um, but, um, you know, mostly just wanted to encourage you guys. Anything that you put on your list last year that uh, didn't end up getting done or, or that you're bummed uh, you didn't stick with as long as you wanted to, whether it's a, a render project, a big, a big project you wanted to start, whether that's a part of your business, part of your family, part of your health. Um, it's a good time to, to start writing stuff down. I've always believed at least in trying to write down where you want to go and um, understanding that, you know, your intention is what starts any action is the thought, the thought of it that it's possible um, is, is, is what really starts any big action in your life. So I just encourage anybody uh, just to sit with some paper and write down what the heck you're thinking. Just get it out of your brain for a second. Start to look at it. So um, kind of a just end of the year little little piece for you, for anybody listening. It's been helping me uh, quite a lot throughout the years. Anything you guys do at the end of the year that uh, you, you might want to recommend? Other than like, I, I also uh, drink very heavily. So like if that helps anybody else. I try not. I try to, to like, I cleaned my office and like kind of cl decluttered, I guess. Mm. Um, which is nice because, you know, a lot of times working up to a holiday or you're, you're doing a lot of different things, really busy and you kind of push things off. So I try to use this time to like dust them and clean my office and reorganize it so that it's a place. I'm a big believer in creating a space in which you want to be in and you want to create in, which is why I, you know, have all this junk everywhere. And, um, for me, I want to create uh, an environment that I go to every day that I'm excited to go to that I want to be in. And so for me, I use this time to like clear off stuff, maybe put up a few items that I've been meaning to put up or um, find a good place for a new toy or new sculpture or new book to sit on the shelf and just kind of get my office reset. Hmm. Good. Chris, you have any habits at the end of the year? Uh, I sure do. It's kind of the opposite of what you guys are talking about, though. Uh, what I do in uh, December, kind of, you know, December, January is for one month, I get Netflix and I catch up on everything. I watch, just watch everything <laughs> on Netflix. So this entire, <clears throat> entire break has been nothing but Netflix. 
like I've been watching Black oh my Mirror God. and and okay, uh, so Dark Matter and everything. And but then for the other eleven months, I do not have Netflix. You, you, so this you is turn, turn like, it off. Are you are you sleeping? Yeah. Are you eating? Like what? Are you just like living in front of Netflix? Well, we just had a, a bunch of days off, so That's like awesome. I'm still doing all my other things. You know, what and about, I still visit in family and all that. But all my free time is going to Netflix. <laughs> have you seen? Uh, all right, I'm going to give you my favorite Netflix shows, and you tell me if you've seen them yet. Um, Luke Cage. No. Daredevil. I haven't thought any of the Marvel yet. Yeah. No? None of the okay. Marvel superhero. Start with Daredevil and Jessica Jones, because those are the two that will lead you into Luke Cage, which are all three are fantastic shows. Um, I don't know if you're into that universe or not, but they are great shows. Uh, House of Cards, you got to watch that. That's a good Of course, one. of course. Um, I was looking for show uh new shows not that long ago and i didn't really i i didn't find anything that i liked and now we're doing homeland which apparently um was a really good show i don't know if it's still on the air or not it probably is but um it started i think six season six years ago and so we're just now watching that and catching up but yeah dude um you gotta you gotta watch uh luke cage man it's so good <laughs> all right so i have good. i have I two for you the the Tom Petty documentary, that's probably Tom my Petty favorite one. Uh, there's also the Eagles documentary, which I'm not a fan. I guess it, Eagles. I become a fan of the Eagles every time I watch this documentary because it's such a great film. Um, and uh, there was one more. Oh, there's a history of hip hop. I forget the name of it right now, but that's really good on Netflix. I'm right now. Theme on Nick's picks. Yeah, the history of hip hop one. I forget the name of it. If anybody knows, put it in the comments. Uh, I know maybe I'll go find it. But it's like a six, um, a six piece story of like the start and as it builds, and it basically ends in the '90s. It's like, and then hip hop was made. It's just this really intro how it got started thing. Um, really, really good. But dude, one month of Netflix. I love that. One month of just splurging on <laughs> Netflix. Oh and, it's, and it's not just Netflix. It's also like the Amazon Prime. Like that's why I watched The Witch. That's why you know, I've been working my way through a bunch of movies I missed throughout mm -hmm. the year. And yeah, it's been, it's, it's, I didn't know it was a, a habit of mine until like winter break was coming up. I was like, I don't have anything specific to do. It's like, let's get Netflix. I was like, wait, I've done this the last three years. I love it. So I, I feel like there's like this resurgence of, um, horror movie not i don't even want to call them horror movies because they're more like just like they can they don't always fall under horror but i feel like it's now with um production companies like dark castle and um uh something with the word house in it i forget the name of that production company these production companies are kind of using oh, that house, house, yeah yeah they're using these um this format as a way to kind of launch new directors and there's been some really good films to come out of that like um, i think the maybe the witch might be one of them actually but and that's the first time director as well yeah and then the other um film that i watched that's similar this actually produced by sam raimi i watched it over um a couple days ago it's called don't breathe and that was a really good movie too and i think that was uh part of that same that same thing and I think there's another movie that kind of fall, feels similar to that. It's the one called It Follows. Have you seen that? I, I know all about it, but I have not seen it. That's another one. So those are two I've other. I've heard that one's really Two cute. movies you should definitely check out is It Follows and Don't Breathe. Because those are, they're not necessarily horror, but they're really weird and crazy. Um, anyway, Sweet. we could do a whole other podcast on movies. Yeah, <laughs> we, need, we need another I mean, I'm sure the world doesn't need another podcast network, but we need the Netflix podcast. We need the movie oh, podcast, the um, Everyday Carry podcast. <laughs> we got Anna. I'm well, sure. we could do the Reddit, uh, uh, you know, uh, lists. Reddit, Reddit digest. Reddit di <laughs> I for my favorite thing. No, just, <laughs> my slipper. I just realized I just blew out a giant <laughs> hole. Oh, uh, no. in my favorite slippers. I'm super bummed. Will 2016 ever stop? I know, dude. Will the now horrors you're, ever end? Now your slippers. Now I gotta, <laughs> God. Oh, that's the worst. You need new ones. Yep. All right, friends and lovers. Sucks. Happy 2017. Hope you had a productive, successful year. We will see you next year. I always love that joke. Um, And uh, we're, 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 we're going to keep the podcast rolling. And for now... um. Uh, for now, we'll see you in another podcast. Thanks again, guys, for stopping by in between some holidays. And uh, we'll see you in another one real soon. Bye, bye everybody. Bye, everybody. Happy bye, everybody. New Year. Happy New Year.